Hello Nigeria, I am Becky Madujemu. Welcome to your indispensable Sunday Tonic Newsline. For a sneak preview, a young businesswoman is brought down by her neighbors. We investigate how she was murdered and what motivated the capital crime. This week, we return to Kasua Dari village. Yes, same community where the people are decrying the spate of rape. This time, you won't believe who the alleged culprit is. Another shocking incident happened in a house after members had dinner. The mood of the people in that locality has been sorrowful since then. The reason for the sadness will be explained. On a cultural note, we are bringing several traditional events to your screen. A royal naming ceremony by a revered kingdom is one of such. We have more amazing stories as well, which will come right after the news by Claire Adilabu Abdul Razak. Hello, Becky, and welcome to Abuja. And here is the news. President Mohamed Buhari will depart Abuja Monday for Niamey, Niger Republic, to participate in the 57th Ordinary Session of the ECOWAS Authority of Heads of State and Government. The one-day summit will deliberate on the special report on COVID-19 to be presented by President Buhari in his capacity as the ECOWAS champion on the fight against COVID-19. President Buhari is expected to coordinate the sub-regional response against the pandemic. In furtherance of that objective under the supervision of the champion, Nigerian Ministers of Health, Aviation and Finance were appointed chairpersons of the Ministerial Coordination Committees on Health, Transport, Logistics and Trade, as well as Finance respectively. In addition, this summit will receive a special report on the ECOA Single Currency Programme to be presented by President Julius Maada Bio of Sierra Leone and Chair of the Authority of Heads of State and Government of the West African Monetary Zone, alongside President Alassane Watara, who is Chair of the West African Economic Monetary Union. The President of the ECOWAS Commission, Jean-Claude Cassibro, will present to the West African leaders the 2020 interim report on activities of the sub-regional body, including ECOWAS Vision 2050. The alarming rise in incidents of terrorism, insurgency, armed banditry and piracy will also come under focus, while the disruption of the democratic process by the military in Mali will receive further attention. Similarly, in Burkina Faso, Cote d'Ivoire, Ghana, Guinea and Niger, where parliamentary and presidential elections are scheduled for this year, the imperative to strengthen democracy in the sub-region by respecting constitutional provisions, rule of law and outcomes of free and fair polls would also be emphasised. And the defense headquarters wish to reassure residents of the FCT and other adjoining states that the armed forces of Nigeria and other security agencies have been on red alert to combat crime and ensure effective surveillance of the federal capital territory and other parts of the country. A statement by the coordinator of Defense Media Operations Major General John Eneche. The defense headquarters says this has become necessary, simple to a purported memorandum from the Nigeria Customs Service warning its staff for a possible attack on the FCT. Major General Nature notes that the public is advised to go about their businesses while the armed forces and other security agencies assure Nigerians that the offensives against criminals will be sustained until normalcy is restored in all parts of the country. The public is enjoined to remain vigilant and report any suspicious activity accordingly. And the Police Force Cybercrime Unit, Interpol National Central Bureau, Abuja, has arrested two suspects for defrauding Frederick Von Hahn. The sum of 1.5 million euros and another 880,000 euros as advance payment for the supply of COVID-19 personal protective equipment. Force Public Relations Officer, DCP Frank Mba, in a statement says the suspects who are members of a sophisticated transnational criminal network cloned the corporate website of the German company. The arrest of the suspect was sequel to a mutual legal assistance treaty received by the Bureau from the Office of the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice conveying a request from the German government for investigations into fraudulent transactions on the procurement of COVID-19 personal protective equipment linked to a Nigerian-based 
bank account. The Inspector General of Police, while assuring members of the public and the international community of the commitment of the force in tackling cyber crimes and other transnational crimes, notes that the suspects will soon be arraigned. And the national president of Jamato Isla Izalato Bida Wa Ekamati Suna Sheikh Abdullah Abdullahi Bala Lao has urged Muslim clerics to support the federal and Kaduna state government's efforts towards doubts and tension in southern Kaduna by preaching peace and harmonious coexistence amongst various groups. He said this when he led the delegation of the group to Governor Natsuru Ahmed Al Rufai in Kaduna. Mohammed Umar Ajinge reports. By the wave of violent conflicts in southern Kaduna, the leaders of faith have been extending support to both security agencies and governments with a view to dousing tension and profile lasting solution to the edge down crisis. Members of Izalo Tulbidia, Wake Amatu Sunnah, led by their leader Sheikh Abdullah Hibalalo, are here on the same mission to make their own input. The group commended the effort of both the federal and the state government in calming the situation through deployment of more security assets and above all bringing together the agreed parties on the dialogue table for genuine reconciliation and sustainable peace in the affected areas. So we are here as an Islamic organization to support the peaceful coexistence of our people in Kaduna State. Without peace and harmony, you cannot even practice your religion. This is another visit that gives the state government hope that the violence will soon be history. Governor Nasr Ahmed Erufai says aside the heavy security presence in the affected areas, religious leaders can play a vital role in getting people to embrace peace. Well, we present them with all the facts, all the information, uh, for them to use the holy books to guide how they will preach to the congregation. And we are very grateful for that. We think it's key. This, this is why um, we are very pleased to receive the national president of Khan and all the top bishops. And then we inaugurated the House of Kaduna family last week. And the Sultan of Sokoto also visited all along the same line. It is expected that the message of peace will get down to the agreed parties for immediate restoration of normalcy to southern Kaduna. <laughs> And Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development, Sadia Umar Farouk, has expressed the federal government's commitment to devise access to reach out to IDPs in hard to reach areas through the provision of relief items. The minister stated this during the demonstration of food distribution by helicopters via parachute by the military in Meidugri. Ilyasu Ali Yakubu tells us more. Five out of the ten C-130 cargo airplanes of the Nigerian Air Force have so far landed in Medjugorje, the Borno state capital, with assorted full items for onward distribution to IDP camps. The full items include rice, beans, greens and condiments. The breakdown shows that 26,000 bags of 12.5 kg parboiled rice, 26,000 bags of 25 kg bags of beans, 26,000 bags of 4.5 kg maize and millet, 1,300 bags of iodine salt, 2,620 liters kg of vegetable oil, among other condiments. The Humanitarian Affairs Minister said President Muhammadu Buhari is resolved to continue to provide more food items to the less privileged and vulnerable Nigerians, especially in the mix of COVID-19, while commending the Nigerian military for their doggedness in the fight against insurgency, Sadia Omar Farouk said the usage of helicopters in reaching out to IDPs in non-accessible areas via parachute will go a long way in making life more meaningful to IDPs who were heated to non-accessible. This airdrop is possible. We can drop this food to areas that we cannot access by road or because of some other uh, challenges. I think that's the most important thing for this food to get to the uh, uh, targeted beneficiaries. And there's going to be air surveillance. And <coughs> and then we are going to mark those locations. Borno State Deputy Governor Omar Usman acknowledged President Muhammadu Buhari's intervention in the Northeast, which he said 
would never be forgotten in a hurry. From Medjugorje in Borno State, Ilyasu Aliyaku, NTA News. Now, India reports more than 90,000 new COVID-19 cases in just one day. And that's just as Melbourne extends stage four coronavirus lockdown. Let's join Joy Sumeto for a weekly review of the pandemic. Nigeria continues to see a significant decrease in the number of new coronavirus cases. A review of official data by the Nigeria Center for Disease Control shows that the country recorded a weekly figure of 1,178 new cases, the lowest since May, while a total of 1,678 persons recovered from the disease and were discharged. The country also recorded a weekly total of 43 new COVID-19 deaths, the highest in four weeks. The NCDC in its daily update stated that out of the 54,905 infections so far, 42,992 persons have recovered, while 1,054 deaths have been recorded. And statistics published by Worldometer as at 6 p.m. Nigeria time show that 27,156,400 people globally have now contracted COVID-19, while 885,034 of the number have died. In one week, global infection figures rose by 1.8 million, while more than 36,000 fatalities were recorded. Meanwhile, a strict lockdown in the Australian city of Melbourne has been extended by two weeks, with officials saying the resurgence of COVID-19 cases have not declined. The state has been the epicenter of the country's second wave, accounting for 90% of Australia's COVID-19 deaths. And India on Sunday recorded 90,632 new coronavirus cases in 24 hours. Data from the country's health ministry reveals that 1,065 persons also succumbed to the virus in the same 24-hour period. And that's it from here. I am Joyce Ometu. And away from COVID-19, the attention of the Minister of Labor and Employment, Dr. Chris Ngigi, has been drawn to the proposed strike action by members of the National Association of Resident Doctors, NAD. In a statement, the minister notes that in three conciliatory meetings, the NMA attested to the fact that six out of the eight demands listed by the group have been addressed comprehensively and satisfactorily. Dr. Ngigi reminds NAD that it is against labor laws and ILO conventions that for parties in conciliation over any issue to employ arm-twisting methods. The statements further adds that NAD already has pending cases in court and for that reason the group should respect the laws and withdraw the ultimatum issued to down tools with effect from Monday, September the 7th. Now, a mega conference against rape organized in Garaku, Kokona, local government area of Nasarawa State is nudging government and all relevant key players to tackle cases of rape and violence against women with the same commitment deployed in the fight against COVID-19. Let's join Blessing Danfulani for the rest of the story. Cases of rape and other sexually related violence against women, which became alarming, is worrisome to government, groups and individuals, hence this conference. That we should know that rape is not our culture. Everybody is a potential victim of rape, which is the reason why uh, we bring together all the scholars. Stakeholders at the conference call for concerted efforts of government, parents and relevant authorities towards combating rape and moral decadence, describing rape as dehumanizing. I've been anti-cultural, anti-human, and therefore condemnable. To ensure that all the perpetrators of uh, rape are being punished, we went to the extent of castration. We we'll keep doing it every now and then in our own local way to see that we keep educating the, the youth. So parents have a lot of roles. The church has a lot of roles. In the sand dressing, drug abuse, lack of sex education and joblessness, we are identified as some causes of rape. Blessing and Fulani, NTA News. 
And the People's Democratic Party National Campaign Council for a Edo State Governorship Election has commended the Obor of Benin, Obaiware II, for his fatherly intervention to ensure a peaceful and credible governorship election in that state. A statement by the Secretary of the Publicity Subcommittee of the National Campaign Council on Edo Governorship Election, Kola Logodio, says the party's campaign, as well as its members and supporters across the state, assures that they will continue to conduct their activities and campaign in very peaceful and orderly manner. It also stated that the party's campaign team and members value the forthright admonitions, re reprimands, counsel and direction by the royal father, which is a reinforcement of the party's established and unwavering commitment towards peaceful electoral process, particularly in the Edo State governorship election. It further urges all key players to allow their actions to be guided by the admonitions of the Oba of Benin, as well as other royal fathers in the state, before, during, and after the elections. And the federal government has commenced the rehabilitation of outer Marina Bonny Camp Road and Eco Bridge through Akwagwam Bridge. The contract, which will be completed in 12 months, is expected to address perennial flooding experienced along that route. Dr. Uguyemi has a report. Phase of the 9 km project being funded by Sukuk began earlier this month. The work being carried out include excavation for the provision of concrete line drains. This became necessary to address the issue of flooding around Amadubelu Way on Victoria Island and its environs. So now we have, we have increased the size of the drains that we are providing to take care of the runoff water which will now be taken down to up to uh, Ademola Ade to Kubo. And we are going to overlay the carriageway. So that is the overlay of the carriageway that we are carrying out on the uh, outer marina road. That is from Agbagba up to Epo Hotel. Meanwhile, the Federal Ministry of Works has begun the installation of a 2.4 meter height steel gantry and warning signs on Eco Bridge to prevent axle load abuse on the bridge. In Lagos, Dotson, Miami, NTA News. And repairs on the damaged portion of Riga Chukung Bridge is in progress. Abdullahi Mohammed reports that observers are worried about another looming threat to the alternative. The life of the alternative bridge, which has been the saving grace for motorists, a couple of days when this bridge has been closed, hangs on the balance now. This is because a tiny hole that we noticed yesterday has opened up, damaging the transition base of the bridge. A break in the ongoing rehabilitation of the Rugachikun Bridge, which caved in for the second time, and another unfortunate incident looms. In the last couple of hours, it was a tiny hole, and now the transition base of the bridge is threatened. On the other side, too, it's a, a hole that I come and somebody entering that place. On the other side, now they have to both sides they have to be repaired. Otherwise, they don't want to any time for now you can break down. This bridge has been the only link to about eight states across northern Nigeria. And what is more worrisome is that a good number of the estimated 24,000 vehicles that apply the bridge are heavy-duty trucks. The weather is also brewing. More rains may hit the grounds, and that could be disastrous to this bridge. If eventually these two bridges are closed to traffic, commuting and supplies to about eight states across northern Nigeria will suffer. And the damage that this will cause to the economy of the nation can only be imagined. In Kaduna, Abdullah Mohammed, NTN News. Hmm. And from Bauchi State comes a report that the state governor, Bala Mohammed, has promised to leave the state better than he met it. He gave the assurance that the flag of ceremony for the construction of new township roads across the state. Mahmoud Ibn Mohammed reports that Governor Yeso Wiki of River State performed the flag of ceremony. The township roads are 3.5 kilometers Mudalawal market road that stretches through Bakinkura, Gwangwangwang, Bakaru, and Ofadumi to railway in Bauchi Metropolis. 
Others are two township roads in Bununu, the headquarters of Tafabuleo local government area with the length of 2.5 kilometers. The Sina Ishira local government also with 2.5 kilometers and 1.65 kilometers in Sadi of Darazo local government area. Construction of these roads would serve to uplift the living conditions of the dwellers by making the towns easily accessible. It's not how much money you have, but how you are able to manage with the little you have. Governor Wike had earlier paid homage on the Emir of Bochi al Hajir Luan Suleiman Adamu at his palace. In Bochi, Mahmoud ibn Muhammad, NTA News. All right, let's take some sports stories now. A Nigerian National League restates condition for registration as new record is set in athletics in the Czech Republic's capital, Prague. Amazi Marcos has more on sports update. Following the approval given by the Nigerian government for the resumption of sporting activities, the Nigeria National League has directed clubs to submit certificates of incorporation from the Corporate Affairs Commission as one of the 